Hi there, Steve Coffin here. This will be the last in this in this series of Steve Summer Sessions, where I answer your questions that you submitted via Twitter with the has hashtags Ask Steve. Uh, I'm going to answer a question that comes up all the time, and I'm going to try to touch on a few others that uh, were also raised by uh, some of you who follow this uh, series. The main uh, subject, therefore, of my uh, little video here is how long does it take to learn a language? Uh, this question is asked often and in different ways. Uh, one person asked, how long does it take to get from uh, A2 to C2, for example, I think his question was. Uh, you may be familiar with the common European framework levels for languages. Uh, if not, you can Google for it. Uh, a is beginner, B is intermediate, and C is advanced, and they have A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Um, so, how long, does it, how long does it take? Well, first of all, it depends what you want to achieve. If all you want to do is to be able to say a few things like, hello, my name is, and so forth, it doesn't take very long. It can take you, you know, no time really. Uh, to do that. You won't understand much of what is said back to you, but you can at least say a few things and that has some value. But I'm going to talk today primarily about getting to fluency. And if you remember my previous video, I said that fluency just means getting to where you're comfortable. So I think that on the European scale, B2, somewhere between B2 and C1 is fluency. Uh, C2 is, means you're absolutely excellent. I wouldn't say flawless, but that you can basically, you never have situations where you can't express yourself. That's C2. B2, C1, to, me, to my mind, is fluency. How long does it take to get there? Well, I think I'm going to illustrate this by referring to my own experience as a language learner. Um, the, I won't talk about French because I had French at school, even though I didn't really speak much French until I got motivated. But then I also spent three years in France as a student, studying in French and so forth. So that's a rather special case. Um, Chinese was the next language. And I studied Chinese in Hong Kong, uh, which is not a Chinese speaking environment. So um, mostly what I did was I had three hours a day of, of uh, one to one with uh, Chinese teachers. And then I just spent a lot of time listening and reading. Uh, I think that I studied six, seven hours a day because I did very little else other than yeah, I played some tennis, I would go jogging, I would have, uh, obviously I'd eat, uh, but I'd often eat listening to my uh, tape recorder um, and I'd have, you know, social activities uh, out with friends, this kind of thing. But I think I spent about 2,000 hours. Uh, in sort of 10, 11 months, I spent about 2,000 hours. At the end of this period, I was able to write the British Foreign Service exam. Uh, you know, we had to write uh, an essay in Chinese, translate newspaper editorials from Chinese into English, from English into Chinese, had to write a diplomatic note in Chinese. I had an oral exam in Chinese. Uh, and I think I probably was at a C1 level, uh, 2,000 hours. Now, since that time, I had uh, lots of opportunity to use Chinese I visited China perhaps a dozen times. Uh, I know Chinese people here in Vancouver. So I have i don't know how many hours I've spoken, but I've spoken quite a bit and my Chinese has improved. Although recently I've spoken less, so the Chinese has probably fallen off a bit. 2,000 hours. Uh, I should point out that I did better than the other students, largely because I aggressively sought out content to read more than listening because in those days, we had these big clumsy tape recorders, didn't have the modern MP3 player. Uh, but I sought out for Chinese books with glossaries because I didn't want to use a dictionary. It's just too clumsy. And there were lots of these readers on politics, on history, on literature, on geography and so forth. And I think I read five times as much as any other student. And I think that was the secret to my success. 2000 hours for Chinese. All right. Russian. I spent five years, about an hour a day, largely listening uh, and working at Link. Uh, Link in those days was very slow and clumsy, so it was a lot less efficient than it would be today. But I think I spent 2,000 hours over the five years. Uh, what level am I? I think in Russian I'm more like a B2. 
uh, with relatively little practice in speaking. Uh, probably I have a larger vocabulary in Russian than in Chinese. If I had an opportunity to speak more, to use the language, if I were in Russia for even a month, uh, I think that my uh, Russian would improve and I could reach a C1 level with a lot of additional uh, practice speaking. But my comprehension of spoken Russian, of written Russian, is probably at a C1 level. So, 2,000 hours spread over, spread over five years. Uh, both of those languages are difficult in the sense that there's relatively little common vocabulary with English. Russian is more complicated in terms of grammar. Chinese has other problems such as learning the characters, dealing with tones. Uh, but building vocabulary in Chinese is easier once you know uh, enough characters. Uh, Czech was the next language and uh, because of Russian, because the structure is very similar in Czech, is very similar to Russian and about 50% of the vocabulary in Czech is identifiable through Russian, it went more quickly. And I would think that I spent about 500 hours on Czech uh, and my Czech is probably B1. Although again, I think I read and understand spoken Czech at a B2 level. But that's 500 hours. Um, I should say that, you know, now that I can only study an hour or two a day, um, it's my experience, and I felt the same when I was studying Chinese, that the more concentrated your study, the better, the faster you learn. If you can put in eight hours a day, that's over uh, one year, that's better than one hour a day over eight years. That you will forge these new neural networks in your brain more quickly if you do it that way. I apologize for the noise outside here. Um, so Czech was 500 hours. I would say that Romanian I probably spent about 150 hours and my Romanian is such that I was able to carry on uh, halfway uh, comprehensively uh, conversations in Romania. I can read the newspaper. I'm probably at a B1 level in Romanian. But I, I think that if I put in another 150 hours, I could very quickly be at a B2 level in Romanian. Uh, and the reason why it's much faster with Romanian is obviously because 70% of the vocabulary is similar to Italian and French. And the structure is similar to other Latin languages, but it does have a number of things that are specific to Romanian that you have to learn. Korean, I probably spent 300 hours and uh, I still think I'm a A2 in Korean. I don't understand the language as well. I understand Romanian very well. Korean is more difficult. Uh, Korean has structural things, has uh, a number of issues that make it more difficult. Uh, so, I guess in summary then, the simple answer to the question is, it'll take, it depends how well you want to speak the language is the goal. B1, B2, C1, C2. That's point number one. And point number two, it depends on how similar the language is to your own. But if I were to generalize, I would say that for a difficult language, 2,000 hours. For an easy language, 1,000 hours. Now, how difficult or how easy the language is depends on which languages you already speak. So you kind of have a continuum, continuum there, somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 hours that you need to spend. Uh, and the more concentrated the time you can apply to it, the better. Uh, I'm talking about spending time with the language, so I don't necessarily think it matters whether you spend the time in a classroom or reading or listening or doing other activities. It's time spent with the language. I think uh, different people have different preferences. Uh, it's also more convenient to arrange listening, so at the present time I mostly do listening. Uh, one other comment, unless you have a specific reason for wanting to know how long it takes, uh, I find the process of learning language enjoyable. I try to do things that are enjoyable. That's why I focus on listening and reading and listening to and reading things that interest me. So I'm learning about Czech history or Russian history or Romanian history or politics while I'm learning the language. So it's an enjoyable process. I'm not anxious to get to the end of it. But if you wanted to plan, then that's what I would plan on. 
And so, for example, in my own case, if I look forward to the next 20 years, I'll be 68 in October. Uh, you know, I think that depending on the language, a year or two or three, uh, with the amount of time that I will have available to spend, will be enough to learn a language. Easy languages, less than a thousand. For example, Polish would probably take me five, six hundred hours or Dutch uh, if I wanted to go after those easier languages. On the other hand, uh, Arabic, Hindi, Turkish are probably, probably going to take me closer to 2,000 hours. And so I think that over the next 20 years, I'll have time to learn all of those languages and more. Uh, a couple of other questions that I want to touch on briefly here. Uh, one person asked, do you think it's useful to use a dictionary uh, which has Roman letters? And presumably this is for learning uh, Asian languages. Um, I personally believe that um, the dictionary is there to give you a quick sense of the meaning of the word. I don't study dictionaries, and so I want a quick sense of the meaning. Uh, generally, that means a bilingual dictionary. Uh, trouble with monolingual dictionaries is very often the explanation uh, contains words that I don't know. And I don't want to spend my time looking up more words and more words and more words in order to eventually figure out the meaning of a word. I want to get back to the context, to the content that I'm reading so that I can enjoy it and let all of this natural language come into me. So I don't think it really matters. Whatever you're comfortable using in the way of dictionaries is fine. Um, another question is how, how high a level do you need in order to work abroad? Uh, well, it depends entirely on the job. If you're going to be a waiter or a busboy in a hotel uh, doing some manual labor, probably a sort of A2 level is sufficient. Um, if you're working for a foreign company in a foreign country, you probably need C2 if you're working in that environment. If you are simply a representative of a company traveling into other countries, then probably B2, C1 is sufficient. Um, another question was, um, is it possible to achieve native-like pronunciation? If this comes up all the time. I've heard actors and actresses who are British and speak with an American accent or Americans who speak with a British accent, and I can't tell uh, that they're not British or American. Uh, I have heard foreigners speak um, English without an accent. Uh, I can only really judge English speakers. If I hear Luca speak French or German uh, or Spanish, he sounds native to me. But that's really only for a native speaker to judge. He doesn't sound native to me in English. So my quick answer is it's possible, it's extremely rare, and it's not necessary. Another question was uh, how much, because I, I often refer to my listening activities as a major form of, of sort of language learning activity, how much do you have to understand when you listen? In my case, I like to understand 75 to 80 percent. Uh, it's often less than that, but then I want to have uh, texts available that I can read. So that's why if Echo Moskvi, that's why uh, uh, Chesky Roslas, Link, places where you can get uh, text to go with the audio are so important because that way you can read it, you can learn the words, you can listen again and get yourself to where you understand 75 to 80 percent. I don't like to just listen to the language and not understand what's going on, although some people claim that it is beneficial. Okay, I hope I have covered all of, I wrote some notes down here. Um, yeah, I think I've covered everything. I hope I have. Uh, if you have any other questions, send them along. I can try to answer them during my regular videos. And we may have another series uh, sometime in the future. Thank you very much. Bye for now.